sometimes you do a project and it looks like everything's going to work and then it just doesn't. And, you know, that's okay. It just sometimes happens. It happens to us all. And sometimes it goes in a positive direction and, you know, you suddenly end up making some marvellous discovery and it sends you off on a completely different tangent. Or, as in the case of tonight, it's just one big disappointment. So, here's what happened. I got this little module off eBay, which is a high-voltage igniter module, and if I just power it up, it takes lots of sparks, draws about 300 milliamps at 3 volts, and creates lots of sparks across the tip here. Uh, it's basically just across the two wires, but I added the tip. And I thought, would that ignite, you know, air freshener, as one does? So... does ignite air freshener. That was quite interesting. So then I decided to make a completely automated air freshener flamethrower uh, with spark ignition in the front of it by simply getting one of these automatic air freshener units. Now this is where I have to say you do get more stylish ones. Just give a second, I'm just going to grab a more stylish one. Here we go, much more stylish one, and uh, this one would have been great just because it is so stylish that it looked really completely terrible actually. And uh, unfortunately these ones have a slight downside because what I wanted to do was I wanted to connect the spark igniter, which is 3 volt, across the motor so that basically speaking when the unit activates the motor that winds down and presses the plunger on top of the air freshener unit and to dose it out, it would also run the sparker to ignite it. But unfortunately with these posh ones, they uh, have a feature whereby the motor doesn't just wind down, it also winds up again. And the point of that is that uh, if some somebody, uh, well you see it just wound down then up again, the point of it is that um, if someone uh, doesn't know any better, they won't be able to put, if it's wound down at some point, say when it ran when they took the cartridge out and then it wound down, then they wouldn't be able to put the cartridge in. You know what people are like? They just, they just ram it in until it burst and then they'd complain and send it back. So the posh ones wind it back. The cheaper ones just have one transistor driving it. It's not an H-bridge. So you've got the option that says in the instructions that if it's wound down, then you have to push it back up manually to make way for the, the nozzle. So, um... This one is actually simpler, and it also has the other advantage. Just give me a second again. It also has the advantage that uh, it's universal. It accepts all sorts of cylinders, so you could actually stick in a gas refill into it as well, and it grips it by the sort of neck here, and when you lock it in, it would actually hold the butane gas refill, and then you could mount it upside down, it would shoot lots of flames out for a very long time. All very exciting. However, I went ahead of the project, and to make the electrode device, I and the valve, I found in the past when playing about with things like this, that these nozzles sometimes go on fire. <laughs> so, um, I in the past, I've experimentally added on the inkjet refill needles. Now I had one knocking about down here and I've misplaced it, but that's okay. So it's, you, you recognize it's the refill needle, oh there it is, for the end of the syringes. And it just so happens that with these nozzles, if you cut off the plastic here, uh, it, it's actually just the right shape to insert inside into this. And with a little bit of resin, you can then seal it in completely and it just basically makes a relatively flame-proof nozzle. And then I thought, to put the electrodes over the end, it'd be quite good if I just, uh, initially I thought I could get a standard 5-pin Molex connector, cut off the little uh, flap here, and then, where is it, remove three pins, and I'd end up with just the two outer electrodes, which I could bend in. And I thought, maybe I could just drill out the hole so that it uh, sat over the needle, but unfortunately the it, the needle is about 1.3 millimetres diameter, and I, my drills go up in one in half millimetre increments, so it was a wee bit loose. So what I ended up doing, and it's a better option, these are the little bungs you get with the inkjet refill kits, and I got one that you, is sort of se semi-hollow, and I drilled a 3 millimetre hole, and uh, then 
put it through and it lets you slide the position. It also holds it quite tightly. It sort of snugs it. Uh, they're also combustible, apparently, but that's a minor technicality. So that's uh, theoretically a good result. I mean, I can just then stick this over the end of the needle outside the automatic dispenser and when the dispenser uh, powers up the motor, then it also powers this, uh, the igniter. So here's what happened. Let me uh, just uh, power the igniter on again. I'll just uh, spark this up. Let's uh, get it in a good photogenic position. Sparks. Yeah, see that's what happened, it just, yeah, it was a bit unpredictable and then the flames tended to come back here and then just the whole electrode assembly would go and fire, which was quite exciting. Also the spark, uh, because it only ran at, when the flame was coming out, it, it, it was also a bit intermittent and the reason for that, well, I think the transistor in here is just really struggling, so I ended up having to hotwire it a bit at 4.5 volts to get a bit more beef to it. And it still wasn't, you know, it still wasn't quite right. And then I tried to extend the electrodes out further, but then it all got a bit wobbly. And uh, I think it's down to the air to gas ratio, because when you squirt fuel out of these cans, it's basically it's aroma. Uh, in this case, it's called floral groove. I'm not sure I'd call it floral groove. I'd call it um, her house perfume cabinet explosion is what I'd call it, particularly given the amount I dosed the air with while doing the experimentation. Anyway, the, um, where was, what, was I, what was I talking about there? I've just completely forgotten what I was talking about. The, after lots of experimentation and setting things on fire, I came to the conclusion that it's, you know, it's the air to fuel ratio because uh, if you squirt gas out of a butane cylinder and you squirt it directly at a flame, it won't ignite. It actually needs to have blended with the air in the vicinity. And this is also why there are bits of a lighter hanging about here because I did laterally consider putting the nozzle of a lighter on because a cigarette lighter like this actually draws air in. It's the flow of the gas coming out, the butane coming out, actually draws air in the side and that ratio is quite important to get the flame. You know, there's a lot of science around this little um, end cap of these lighters and that's why some don't work that well. But um, the, So I really need to, I, there's a lot more science to this. I need to actually have a nozzle like this on the end of it. Uh, so I may end up revisiting this, but uh, in the meantime, uh, the house is absolutely stinking of Hoor House perfume cabinet explosions. And, um, yeah, lots of zapping, lots of flames and lots of electrodes desoldering themselves and falling off. But um, it's been entertaining, but it didn't have the desired effect, which was basically this unit here uh, just randomly shooting out large quantities of fire uh, every uh, few minutes, depending on the sort of time you set with this little switch. But it was a fun project nonetheless. And uh, yeah, the whole air ratio mix, I have to work in that. Yep, to get this to work properly. But I may revisit it again. I may have another go later on. But uh, yeah, so as I say, uh, some projects, you spend a lot of time on them and they just don't work. But hey, it happens. It's just part of the process. <laughs>